For as long as people have been riding on two wheels, they've had to find ways to communicate with one another. When large packs of prehistoric squids were busting dank nooners on two-stroke triples and drove, of Harley riders were terrorizing quiet suburban towns, theft, narcotics, and violence, they had to find a way to stay connected and in sync. Early on, many hand gestures were established to communicate to other riders when to stop, speed up, and turn, among other instructions. Despite the advent of electronic communicator systems and LED turn signals that are bright enough to illuminate the dark side of the moon, hand gestures can still come in handy during large group rides, while riding an older bike, or to even make yourself more visible to other vehicles on the road. So why don't you close out of your private browser, take a break from one of your most familiar hand gestures, and prepare to learn all of the essential motorcycle hand gestures that every rider needs to know. Before we get too far into the video, I wanted to take a quick second to shout out a really awesome promo we've got coming out at yammynoob.co. If you wanted to get started riding, this is one of the best chances you have. We are giving away not one, but two Yamaha MT-07s with a full set of riding gear. We're picking two lucky winners to end up with the exact same prize, so double your chances. This is an awesome giveaway you're not going to want to miss out on. All you have to do is head over to yammynoob.co, get anything you want from the site, including merch, gear, parts, or a membership, and every dollar you spend will be an entry to win. Make sure you check out all of the official rules as well. This giveaway is ending very soon and you only have a few days to get entered to win and after that, you will not be able to get into this giveaway. So don't miss your chance over to Yamini.co and get all the details. Now let's get into the video. The very first hand gesture a new motorcyclist will experience is the coveted biker wave. Ah, the biker wave. Much like losing your virginity, everybody remembers their first time. I actually remember my very first time. It was about three days after I started riding. I was going down a neighborhood street near where I used to live. I looked over. There was a guy on a red CBR 600 R, and he gave me my first wave. He had no idea that he had such a special impact on me, a moment I would never forget. So guys, if you're able to, make sure you chuck that little wave because you never know who you're gonna give a beautiful experience to. The biker wave can make Make or break an insecure rider's first foray into the world of motorcycling. I've seen countless absolute noobs losing their minds over not being waved to while on their very first ride. Or conversely, similar noobs will cream their jeans the first time they're waved to as if that moment is as monumental as the soul of their beloved grandfather coming down from the heavens and taking over the physical form of the oncoming biker just to give you the biker wave himself and show you how proud he is of you for getting on two wheels. But if we can be totally honest here, the biker wave is a little meaningless. Boomers, please sound off in the comments now. If you think it's disrespectful to not wave to another rider, you probably drive a Jeep too and you're giving a little Jeep wave everywhere. Listen, the aforementioned biker wave, as cool as it is, it refers to when a motorcyclist signals an opposing rider by dropping their arm below their waist and pointing their index and middle fingers down towards the ground. Different riders have varying opinions to the origin of the biker wave, but the general understanding is that it means to keep two wheels down and to ride safe. It's just a cool acknowledgement of two guys, two dudes, going on this universe, riding together and uh, acknowledging our love of motorcycling. Across the pond, some guys give the nod if you can't chuck the throttle hand, obviously, because it's on the opposite side of the road because you guys do everything wrong over there, but you know what I mean. So every so often, it's cool to drop a wave to another rider if you're feeling friendly, but on a gorgeous day with ideal riding weather in an area with motorcyclists, the biker wave is kind of an inconvenience and an annoyance. I don't want to be dropping two fingers down every 30 seconds while constantly passing other riders. There are many instances where you're also not able to take your hand off the grip while in a turn or using the clutch. In the case of a basic head nod can't suffice. Or don't do anything. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's just a nice gesture. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a safety thing. So new riders, don't get all butt hurt when other riders don't wave at you. Some guys don't wave at all. Some Harley riders won't wave at sport bike riders. Some boosted boys won't wave to scooters. Some scooter riders will wave at cyclists on a pedal bike. Sort of as a side note, but it is cool to wave back at kids that wave at you. Kids think motorcycles are awesome so it can make their day to see a cool biker wave back at them. And a five-year-old today may very well see full-blown ecological disaster and economic collapse by the time they enter old age, and most will not be able to afford to board the Tesla Mars shuttle to begin anew on the Martian colony, so at least you could do is give them a wave. Maybe it will be a cherished memory that they'll share with the rest of the mole people living in the sewers beneath a crumbled landscape. Wow, that got a little weird. Back to the subject at hand. One of the most important hand gestures you need to know as a motorcyclist is how to signal turns with your hand. 
While most bikes come with turn signals, maybe you've got a super stripped down cafe racer or a bobber that has had their turn signals deleted. Or maybe you blew a fuse while you're on a ride, or maybe you're leading a group ride where hand signals can make it a lot easier for other riders in different parts of the pack to see. Being able to signal your turns with your hand is a good skill to have that will come in handy for most riders at some point in their career. Now you've probably learned this in your driver's ed, but we're going to go over it again. To signal a left turn, you extend your left arm and hand out to the left with your palm facing down. To signal a right turn, you extend your left arm out to the left and bend the elbow at 90 degrees and make a fist with your hand. The right hand turn signal is still done with the left hand on the left side of the motorcycle because the right hand needs to stay positioned on the throttle and have access to the brake lever. You don't want to not have control over your throttle and brakes while you're riding. To signal a stop, have your arm extended out to the left with a 90 degree bend in your elbow and your forearm pointing down towards the ground with your hand open and your palm facing back towards the riders behind you. These are at the very least the first hand signals that every rider should learn after learning how to properly bike or wave. We use our hands for many functions while on a motorcycle. We've got to signal our devotion to the two-wheeled brotherhood and our lord and savior Valentino Rossi by dropping two fingers down and passing another rider. We must manipulate the throttle with the fine articulation of a calligrapher and of course, we need to feather the clutch and utilize progressive braking and trail braking into corners, my dudes, in order to have the best control possible on your bike and ensure you've got parts that are built to stand up to the most intense riding. You need to get a set of levers from ASV Invent. They are our preferred lever brand and these bad boys are fully adjustable, come in two different lengths and multiple colors and are considered to be unbreakable. Designed by rider Bob Morales after breaking countless levers on his motocross bike, he wanted a solution to the disposable lever. Branded as unbreakable, you better believe ASV has an incredible warranty program so should you manage to ride and break your unbreakable lever, they will replace it at no cost. Use the link below and use the code YAMI to receive 15% off on your entire order. Thanks so much to ASV for the support on the channel. We're super Super excited to be working together. Again, use that link in the description. Use the code YAMI for 15% off. That's my little gift from me to you for checking out this video. Now let's get back to the show. Another hand signal that is key for group rides is how to indicate increasing or decreasing in speeds. These hand signals are imperative because no motorcycle known to man has lighting that indicates you are changing speed. Of course, you have tail lights that indicate braking, but motorcycles often slow down under engine braking, which doesn't trigger the brake light to illuminate, which a lot of you might say, YAM, you should make Make sure to tap the rear brake so that people can see you slowing down, and to that I say, I agree. Unless you ride an electric bike, as some do activate the brake light under regen braking. Signaling the changes in speed will ensure you're able to keep the pack together and spaced accordingly. To use your hand to signal that you are increasing in speed, extend your arm out to the left with your palm facing up and swing your arm upward like a bird flapping its wings. This signal is pretty self-explanatory to the layperson and is an essentially a universal signal for more. Either more speed on a motorcycle, more volume on an amplifier, or more hot dogs during an eating contest. To indicate slowing down on a bike, have your arm extended in the same way, this time with your palm facing down to the ground and swing your arm downward. This can be useful if road or traffic conditions require a rapid change in speed, like for sand or gravel in the road and you want to let people know to slow down, which when signaled preemptively, this can help prevent your riding group from having to make rapid or unsafe changes to their speed. But what about the signal for the rider in the group with the God Complex, the rider on the Turbo Busa who must be the leader of the pack despite being unfamiliar with the route in question and have never ridden with any of the other riders before. Well, in order to assert your dominance in the group ride, defy the social contract shared with other riders, and declare yourself ultimate leader to the group, you must perform a hand gesture that indicates you want the group to follow you. To signal to the group you want them to follow, stick your arm straight in the air above your shoulder, proud and erect in its defiance, with your palm facing forward. This indicates to the rest of the group that you're saying, me, me, I'm the little leader boy. If you dare attempt to lead the group, you must first solve the three increasingly difficult riddles. In the more noble circumstance of someone being nominated to lead the group ride by their fellow riders who respect and admire their courageous spirit, a rider will indicate towards the nominated leader and then swing their arm forward to the front, using their index finger to point forward towards the group ahead of them. Another relatively common occurrence when riding with other riders is having to signal that you are low on fuel. This is pretty self-explanatory as you point to your gas tank in an exaggerated fashion with your elbow pointed so others can see you. This move can also sometimes be used in conjunction 
position with pointing down towards your groin, indicating that you need to use the bathroom. But beware, there is also a similar hand gesture of pointing down towards your nether regions in a way of mocking other riders who lack the courage to hit the rev limiter in sixth gear or ride at 186 miles an hour. That is, of course, a joke, but other similar hand gestures do exist. They don't serve to ridicule your friends or encourage reckless behavior, but instead express your needs as a rider. If the little baby squid gets a little hangry on a ride or needs some snacks because your mom forgot to pack you some Go-Gurts and Lunchables in your saddlebags, you can make a fist and stick your thumb as if you're someone giving a thumbs up, giving a positive acknowledge of a performed action, and then with your elbow extended, gesture upwards towards your mouth like you're popping tasty green M&Ms in your mouth one at a time. Do you guys remember those mini M&Ms that came in the tubes? That was a weird concept. This will let everyone else know in the group that you're a growing boy who needs to stop and get a Snickers bar because you are not yourself when you're hungry. That one sounds fake, but it is actual, factual motorcycle lore. There's also the gesture that indicates you need to stop for fatigue or stretch your legs. To do that, you extend your arms straight to the left, make a fist, and then short up and down movements. Uh, we might have to blur that one out so YouTube doesn't demonetize us. They do love doing that. I wonder why. Say you're out with your boots of boys hunting down 600s on the freeway and you see a cop up ahead. Instead of riding past them at 170 miles per hour like a jigsaw bra would, tap the top of your helmet to indicate to the rest of the group there is a cop ahead. According to the local MSF hand gesture guide, tapping the top of your helmet indicates to other riders to turn their high beams on or off. But any true riding group squid is going to have a tinted visor on at night paired with a tinted windscreen, so who cares if they have their high beams on or not? It's all irrelevant if you're bordering on legal blindness anyways. I think among most if not all riders, the consensus for the helmet tap is police ahead. But I also think a police officer would be pretty ill-advised to attempt to pull over a group of speeding motorcyclists. Many states have no chase laws because the risk to the safety of the rider is just not worth the citation, even if they were lucky enough to catch them. And look, that is not an endorsement of any type for illegal behavior, I'm just giving you the facts. Watch out for cops on motorcycles though, them boys will get you. And if you've ever seen those crazy police motorcycle tests and training videos, you guys know that they can ride. Another hand gesture that can come in handy is the gesture to indicate a hazard in the road. This can be a huge pothole, some fresh oil, a pile of loose marbles, or vengeful grass clippings. Deborah, you got them dang on glass clippings on the fucking floor. Just out there cranking my hog. Freaking grass clippings. God bless. To let other riders know there is a hazard on the left side, point down to the left with your index finger as if there is a hazard on the right side. You would do the same thing, but use your right foot extending outwards as if to say, careful of those clippings, gang, they're out for blood today. And the last hand gesture I want to mention is the signal to pull off the freeway. This can be useful because people are moving so quickly on the freeway, it can be hard to keep everyone together if there is a delay in realizing the group is exiting. To indicate you're pulling off the freeway, extend your left arm out to the side and then move it forward and to the right. This will alert the rest of your group to take the next exit and avoid any stragglers getting lost behind you. Many of these hand gestures are indicated to be used in a chain reaction, so as the leader makes a signal, the rest of the riders signal as well, so everybody in the group is able to receive the same message. Hand signals are important for group rides, especially when communicators aren't in use, or if you just have a mismatched group that doesn't have communicators, and some guys do. It is important to keep everyone on the same page so the ride can be safe and enjoyable for everybody. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't had a chance yet. We are not slowing down on the content, promotions, and giveaways and catching new videos here is the easiest way to stay in touch with all the awesome stuff we have going on in the Yammy Noob universe. Thanks again to ASV for sponsoring today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fact. The oldest known written song is the Hurrian Hymn Number no. 6, which dates back to around 1400 BCE. It was discovered in the ancient city of Ugarit, modern-day Syria, and is written in the Hurrian language using cuneiform script. This hymn is dedicated to the goddess Nikal and is written on a clay tablet. The notation indicates specific pitches, making it one of the earliest examples of sheet music in history. Goodbye. Ah, you've made it to the end of another Yami Noob video. Aren't you just a special little cookie? Aren't you just something so great? Aren't you just, look at you, you're just so freaking cute. Why don't you go ahead and click on the next video? Why don't you go ahead, listen. Hey, 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 I'm just, I'm just kidding around. Hey, 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 listen to me. Click on the video.